Hi, I'm Sherry, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to learn how to make an upcycled harvest apron, like this. They are not difficult to make, and you can make them from one shirt, but I recommend using two so that you have an accent fabric. They have nice pockets, nice size pockets, the tie straps go all the way around like that, and um, they've got cute but you can do cute button closures so we're going to learn how to make this so stick around okay i'm going to do a voiceover on this it's just faster and quicker for me so what we got here is we are dismantling and cutting apart a shirt i always go to my collection and go okay what victim is next and here you see i am removing the collar and you just cut it apart this way. You cut the sleeves off, you cut the collar off, you cut the shoulder seams, flip it over, and we're gonna cut straight down the back until we have that nice big flat piece. And that, we use the very center back for the pocket of this apron. And so you're gonna cut the biggest rectangle you can out of that piece. Uh, different shirts, of course, are gonna have different sizes, so you have to be flexible in how we make this. So here I am, I'm trimming it and getting it just as square as I can because sometimes plaids aren't printed perfect. So you can't just follow them exactly. So I flip it and I try to compare. And once I've got that where I want it, I'm gonna cut my sleeve apart. I cut the, sh the uh, cuff off and I'm gonna split it open. And then I'm gonna cut that little end piece off and cut it off as flat as I can. This is gonna be my gusset for the end of that big pocket. And I'm gonna want four inches on the bottom and about as wide as I can get. And the height, you're gonna be two inches shorter than the height of your folded over big piece. So here you can see I used the big piece to measure it with. And I got my piece now two inches shorter. And I'm gonna make it four inches at the bottom. And I think I ended, mine ended up being about eight inches across the top. I went as wide as I could on it so that, you know, I can put as much as I, you know, want into this apron. I might want to be, you know, picking potatoes out of the garden. So here, one, two inches over, I'm cutting up to the top, and that's my angled, I call it a gusset. I think that's what it is. I'm not a professional sewer, so, you know, that's why, you know, if I can do this, you can do this. Okay, so now I'm taking the piece we cut off that had the buttons, and I'm gonna remove that button strip, which you could actually use that on the apron you know, uh, on the back side of it. But I decided on this one, I'm not gonna. And I'm gonna make my tie straps. So this side of the shirt, um, with a, and you wanna use a piece without a pocket um, if you can. And I'm gonna cut three inch strips out of this entire piece. And I'm gonna use two long and two short together, sew them together to create my tie straps. And remember there's an extra sleeve. I never, I didn't even end up using that extra sleeve. So if you have a shirt that has two pockets, you can get your, your pieces that you need out of that other sleeve. So don't forget that. And I get more good out of these men's shirts in my upcycling. So a lot of fabric in them. And on this side that had a pocket, I'm not gonna use that pocket. I wanted to show you how to make your own. You could, you could use denim pockets on your apron and it would go together much faster. So you could use, um, you know, and be creative. It's your design. You can use all kinds of uh, different patches and buttons. And uh, I decided to make mine about eight inches tall. I ended up actually making mine a little bit more narrow than I normally do because I forgot that in, in this video, I um, turn them over a quarter inch, but when I make them, I use my serger and just go all the way around. So they're a little bit narrower than I usually make, but it's okay, it turned out really cute anyways. And so I had about six by eight inches. And here you're gonna wanna zigzag all the edges of your pocket, just it just helps strengthen it. You know, if you're using it, look at me, muscle my machine, it was rattling. So I showed it who, who the boss was. <laughs> so here I am, I'm zigzagging all the edges of the pockets. And after I get them zigzagged, um, I'm gonna fold them over for the top. About, oh, I decided about, it's about three quarter of an inch and straight stitch them down because I wanna put my button on there on the other side. And I like to top stitch it, so I'm top stitching. And then I'm gonna get some buttons and patches and I'm gonna make these pockets. 
as cute as I can. Oh, that was another funny thing. If you saw that there, the shank foot piece kept falling off my machine. I don't know if I was bumping it, but it just kept falling off. It was hilarious. So here you see me turning them under a quarter of an inch. And the reason I'm doing that is so when I put the pockets on, I don't have to fuss with that while the pocket is on, you know, while, while I'm trying to put it on. Like I don't have to try to turn it under as I'm putting it on. So that way I can just put the pockets on, pin them, sew them down by turning them under first. And, um, and I put a couple buttons on and I picked out my patches and I'm putting patches on and I just zigzag my patches on and I hear I'm trying to put some buttons on. I, I couldn't put it all, you know, YouTube gives me 15 minutes or I have to make two parts when you first start. So I, that's why I'm moving fast. I'm super woman. So here we go. Um, I put your pockets at least four inches down. Because if you don't, you got to turn the elastic under and your pockets will be, I think, too high. And so I've got them four inches down and that pinned them on. Um, and now I am sewing my pockets on. And so here you see me with those triangle pieces we cut out, those gussets. And you put the wide to the top of your apron. And you see better here in a minute. My camera was a little bit um, wonky at first, but I adjusted here. But what you're going to do is you put them to the top. And you match them at the top on the front side where the pockets are and you sew down towards the narrow side and leave your needle in pivot and then sew down and leave the needle down lift your foot pivot put the foot back down and sew all the way to the back side and when you put the other gusset in you're going to want to do exactly the same thing only it's a little bit awkward you do have to shove the bulk oh oh i forgot here i do zigzag it as well you wouldn't have to, but it does make it extra strong. And you know, you never know what you might want to use it for. And you know, I want it to be able to go through a wash and come out well. And and I always use pre-washed, um, whether I'm using fabric or whatever, I pre-wash stuff. So, so here we're gonna do it again. Like I said, in that gusset, you want the wide part up so that it opens and kind of folds to outward. But you're gonna, and going to do exactly the same thing, but I've got the bulk under the neck of the machine this time so that I can start and pivot and do exactly the same thing that you did on the other side. <clears throat> and you see we come up in this way. By doing it this way, we can trim off any excess to make it fit perfect. And voila, there we are. You know, no fussy patterns. Now this is the hard part. This is our elastic piece and you cut it exactly the same width as the like the first seam to seam on the front basically it's the width of that rectangle we cut out that's how wide your elastic will be cut and i use a one inch no roll elastic it's a very stiff strong elastic and i do this because you might be having something really heavy in that pouch and then i do a sew in place so it doesn't the elastic doesn't roll you could do a casing if you and then sew the elastic into that casing you know just pull it through but it, it might roll and stuff so I'd, I always do sew in place so I'm tacking it at both ends of where and and you can see there where I've started it and then you mark the center and that's so I can get it's nice too because it gathers perfect like you've got a perfect gathering and it doesn't roll and it's strong and so I'm pinning it in place and that's where you're gonna have to grab it so don't poke yourself and uh, you're going to get it under and under the machine there, but you're going to get your needle down. It's always important to have your needle down when you first start because you're going to be pulling and you don't want to pull it out from under there. And you have to put pressure on that backside. You'll know when you go to do it when you've got it right because your machine will move forwards. <laughs> so, and then you just make sure it follows the edge of your fabric stretch and you stretch it out. And you're using a straight stitch here. Pull your, once you get to the middle and then make sure your needle is down, grab it at the other end, stretch it, and you have to, getting it started is a little bit harder than when you, once you get going. And you can see why you have to do the halfway point, because your arms aren't long enough to do the whole thing at one time. And so we get to the end here, and then you're going to fold it over. And this would normally be, you know, an elastic casing. You're going to fold it over and I stitch it down right there. You're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, you're, <laughs> you're going to stretch it again, but this time you're stretching it with the fabric and you're going to pull the fabric back. 
and make sure it's, there's nothing extra above the elastic. You know, you're going to make, make sure it always lays flat. And when you sew that down, and it looks so pretty when it's and professional when it's done this way. And once you get used to doing elastic this way, you'll never do them the other way. You'll be like, it just looks and feels so sloppy compared to a sewn in place elastic. And I like it so much better. And then when you get to the end of your elastic, just keep going. We're going to fold it over the same width, clear around the back side. And it's easy to do. You could pin this part down if you want to, but it's not really not necessary. Just lay it flat and fold it and finger crease it. And then I like to do a top stitch on the back piece, not the elastic, just the back piece here. I think it looks so nice. It makes it lay down so flat. And I put my button on. I suggest a shank button, a button that's got a little bit of a back to it so that your loop will go around it. And here I'm making my loop. And I sewed, I think it's a, if I remember right, it's about an inch and a half by five inch piece I used. Um, and what you're gonna do is just, um, I'm gonna make my own little rope out of it. So I sew it together, a folding sides in, and I twist it. But you could use, honestly, it'd be way easier and be so cute to use string here. Just a good piece of string or cording of some kind. Just go, you know, be easier than what I do. But what I do is I twist it up and I sew those top pieces together. And the reason I do that, it's really funny, it almost makes a figure eight and it hugs that button. So the button doesn't just come undone really easy. And once I figure the center point out from my button, where my button's at, I take my seam ripper and I just open that seam up a tiny bit and I tuck it in there and I sew that in place really, really, really strong because you don't want it to come out. And see how it makes almost a figure eight? And it'll hug that button so you don't, uh, it doesn't come undone really easy. But you could use any string there. You could uh, be cre as creative as you want to be. And here you see I'm going to make the straps now. We're almost done. And I've taken the two long pieces and two short pieces and cut them exactly the same and then put a short piece to a long piece, good sides together. And then I want to show you kind of slow here how I fold them. Okay, I, I fold it at the top like that, a little, somewhere around a quarter inch, and I fold in on one side and I fold the other side in. And then this is where you need three hands, but you know, I did it. And so then you fold them together and it should look like that, a nice little sandwich. And so we're going to put that under the machine and I'll show you how fast this is. You can iron this and pin this if you're more comfortable doing it that way. But for me, you know, I got to make a gazillion fast and this is the fastest way I have found to do this. And then you just finger press it. You can use your finger between if you've got something sticking out. This is way faster than trying to like, you know, how you'd sew all the way down and try to turn it inside out. That takes forever. It's very hard to do. This is so fast and it's super strong. And you know, you think about it, you're gonna, you might have a lot of weight in this apron and I want it to be sturdy. I want it to last. And think about all the different fabrics you could use to make these. Like, you know, you could use um, canvas drop cloth. You could use burlap. You could use, you know, any kind of fabric. Think about what you're going to be doing with the apron before you choose your fabric. I usually choose men's shirts that are kind of like a heavy canvas feel to them, mid to heavy weights. So here you see I'm putting the seam side down. It wouldn't matter, but I just think it's prettier. You know, where you sewed it together. And then I'm folding it over a little over an inch and you want to put it right where the elastic just starts right there. And what you're going to do is just makes a good sturdy, you could go like all the way around it and you could even crisscross it like they do tarps to make sure that because you think about it, it's that's the point you're going to be holding all your weight, which is why I wanted to go through. I'm going through what one, two, three, four, four layers of fabric and the elastics. And here we go. Isn't it cute? It's done. Well, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, please. I need all the help I can get. And you guys are all such a blessing. Bye for now.